Hi guys, I'm Duda and today I'm going to be taking over Kittle's YouTube account to give you some tips on how to make a brand board in Kittle. So if you don't know Kittle yet, there's the best opportunity for you to sign up for free in the link below in the description. I recently created a full brand from scratch using Kittle. Yeah, you can do that too. And the brand board is a really important element. First, let's understand what the brand board is a little bit, okay? So the brand board is a visual reference for designers, marketeers, anyone who's involved in creating content and material for the brand and includes the key elements and the guidelines so they can maintain a consistent brand identity. So let's start doing some work. I'm gonna show to you the brand board I made and break it down to you step by step so you kind of know where you're going when you're ready to create your own brand board. Okay, so I usually start with the main logo. It's the primary visual representation of the brand. I like to start with the big impact. It's memorable, it's recognizable, so it's always a good call to start with the main logo on top. Then I go for the color palette. Make sure you include the color palette. It's a very important element of the brand besides it's part of that visual consistency we talked about be creative with the layout maybe you could put the hex color code here if we were doing brand book which is a more detailed and complex style guide i would recommend you to put like some texts explaining colors your color choices the color palette choices you could also throw the black and white logos around here which i did not do you know that's interesting i like that let's do that you know always start your logos in black if it works in black, probably gonna work in any color. Okay, nice. We threw the black and white logos here, very important. Sometimes in certain circumstances, you're not gonna be able to use colors. So you have to know if your logo works in either black or white. Now you're gonna talk a little bit about the typography you chose for the brand. I know it don't look like because this typography section is poor, but I'm really passionate about typography. I think it's incredible how typography can communicate for itself. Honestly, I can make a whole other video about typography if you guys wanna see that. One day, I'm really passionate about typography. I would love to have a conversation with you guys about you know font choices, typography. Uh, the difference between typeface, typography, lettering. I'm really into lettering as well, writing letters and vectorizing. But anyways, um, in my this is really simple. As I said, it's really poor. But when I'm doing a brand book, as I said before, I usually explain my font choices. I put my secondary typography here. For this brand, I honestly saw myself just using one main typography, which was Dinapuff. Dynapuff? I don't know how to say that. I think it's Dynapuff or Dynapuff. I'm gonna say Dynapuff. So yeah, I just used this one main typography. But you know what? Let's add a font pairing. We already added the black and white logo here on top. Let's keep, you know, making adjustments to this brand board. Why not? Let's add a pairing font, a secondary typography, just to make things more professional. Help me out, guys. Which one should I use? Well, a sensory font because, you know, I feel like Dynapuff, it's already too much. So something simple to go with Dynapuff. Dynapuff, I don't know how to say that. Archivo, I actually like Ar Archivo. I think it's Ar Archivo. I keep saying fonts names wrong, I'm sorry. I really like CallSense. Yeah, I think CallSense, it's, um, let's go for CallSense. I like that. Sense, and then, yeah. This is gonna be the secondary typography. So I'm gonna make it smaller. Wait, I'm gonna ungroup that, looks good. I feel like this is still too big. Okay. Okay, cool. I like this. I like this. It's easy. It's clean. It's sleek. The contrast is perfect. I mean, call sense is a sensor font. It's minimal. It's muttered. And Dynapuff is this. It's puffy. I like the contrast. So here I put a little section for any icons or illustrated elements you may have um so this is the icon that i use on the in the logo you probably noticed that but you know what let's add more elements i think it's gonna give a little bit of funkiness to the brand so i'm gonna use i want i think i'm gonna use abstract elements which which is in the same category of this the icon that i used Ooh, i like this little flower I think it kind of matches the, you know, the little star I used mm, this as well. It's cool. Maybe I could use 
different colors, right? The brain colors. Yeah. Okay. It needs to have the contrast though, because you know the break the background is green, so it needs to contrast. And not every color of the color palette is going to contrast with the green. So I have to be careful with that. Maybe two more. I like this. You see, it's not the same shape, but it matches the main icon, the icon that it's on the logo. So that's the vibes that I'm trying to go for, you know? And maybe a little rounder thing, another flower. So we just don't go too far away from the initial idea, maybe. Yeah, okay. Okay. So yeah, add your icons, your illustrated elements, if you want to put a little text explaining the icon, the elements, it's cool. If your brand needs packaging, not every brand does, but if yours do, make sure you throw it in the brand board. I made this label using Kiddo. I also got those mock-ups with Kiddo mock-up. Amazing, right? Um, I I love Kiddo mock-up, to be honest. It's amazing. I used the background remover to remove the background from the mock-up. Make sure you include some mock-up in the brand board and it's important to see how the brand will behave in real life um and i made this part to be visually appealing you know the brand board needs to be visually appealing as well as um informative especially if you're showing it to a client so yeah be creative with the layout and include some mock-up and lastly the imagery it helps to guide a brand in what visual direction it should take again it keeps the brand consistency and is the visual storytelling it, it tells you what the brand feeling is like what the brand vibe is like so yeah it's nice to include imagery and the brand board so yeah those are my tips to create a brand board these are just some elements that i like to include in my brand boards if you like to go more in depth less in depth i mean that's on you there's no specific rule for that i think some elements that i did not include in this specific brand board but i think they're interesting to include maybe the mood board secondary logos and sub marks if your brand has that and patterns yeah patterns are super cool and that's it if i missed anything or if you have any questions leave a comment down below i'll be glad to debate some design hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned something new from it thank you for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and see you again sometime bye